He went from the streets of the South Bronx to the basketball court at the University of South Carolina to becoming one of the best college basketball coaches in history. And in this edition of Quintez Close Ups, I talk exclusively with Bobby Crimmins. Well, Coach, it's been a couple months since I've actually seen you. Yeah, I've been, I've been really moving around, you know. Ever since I stopped coaching, um, I spent the year at the college um, being a consultant for Dr. Benson. Oh, yes. And helping out with the transition. I was really proud of the team, Coach Wojcik. Oh, yes. They won 24 games last year. And then, um, so now it's time I'm going to be, my wife and I are going to be moving back to our Hilton, home, Hilton Head home. Oh, yes. But we'll be coming to some games here. And most of all, you know, I, I loved my, um, my six years coaching here and then my seventh year as a consultant. It's a great place. It's a great school. Um, I'll miss a lot of things about Charleston, but um, uh, I have some really, really fond memories. I bet. And turn back the clock for me to March 19th, 2012 when you retired as men's basketball coach yeah. here at the College of Charleston. From what I um, remember, actually, you were basically fighting back tears, and <laughs> you know you were barely able to talk. Yeah. Tell me, um, when you were done with that particular announcement, where was your mind? What were you thinking? Yeah, well, um, something happened to me late in that season, um, and um, I, I, I didn't, wasn't sure what it was. Okay. At first, I thought it was something physical, and then it could have been something mental uh, in terms of anxiety. And there was something going on, and I just wasn't myself. And when you're not yourself, you cannot lead the team. So uh, I had tremendous confidence in my staff yes. and my um, associate head coach, Mark Bind. And so I let him run the team, and he did a fantastic job. Wow. And then I thought about coming back. The school wanted me to come back. Dr. Benson asked me to come back. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, but, you know, um, sometimes your body tells you you need a break. And um, I just didn't like um, the way my body kind of turned on me. So um, I decided to take a break. I was hoping Mark uh, would get the job. He did not get it, but uh, they brought in an excellent coach in Doug Wojcik. And uh, the most important thing is, you know, for me, I wish I could have stayed and finished the job yeah. because of the players. Sure. The, the players, I recruited those kids. Oh, yeah. And um, that's, what, that's what the hardest thing was. And when the day finally came, when I, uh, the day you're talking about, um, when I retired, um, I thought a lot about those kids, that, especially the younger ones. Oh, yes. um, you know, um, Ajay Baru. Andrew uh, Lund. On, you know, Andrew was, Andrew was a senior. So there was a lot involved, uh, Willis Hall. Oh, yes. And um, so, but, you know, it is what it is, and sometimes you, you know, you've got to do what you feel is the right at the time. And the most important thing to me was to get my health back, and I did that. Um, by stopping, um, I, I, I worked really hard on getting my old self back and um, addressing some you know, health issues. And again, um, I had to get proactive there, and, and at the end of the day, I'm still not sure what happened, yes. but a lot of it had to do with maybe burnout, uh, maybe anxiety. Uh, maybe exhaustion, not sleeping properly, and things like that. And uh, but you know that's all behind me now. Yeah. And um, and uh, again, I enjoyed my year as a consultant. And um, and I'll again, I'll always always have really really fond fond memories. Well, you told this person this: do your thing, do it your way. Those are the words that you expressed to Doug Wojcik when he became yeah. a head coach. That's correct. Um, I'm wondering how is he doing right now as coach? Very well. Um, they won 24 games the first year. And that was important to me that um, I wanted to leave here uh, with the program in, in good shape. Sure. That was very, very important to me. And I thought we, I thought we were going to have an excellent team. And, um, you know, the only thing, the only obstacle in our way was Davidson. Davidson had a, a better team. They did. And they're incredible. Oh, yes. But Doug, Doug, Coach Wojcik did a fantastic job, um, had a lot of incredible road games. Uh, got beat at home a couple of times unexpectedly, but um, beating Baylor on the road. Um, that was beat, huge. Beat Boston College here at Crest Arena. And um, so it was um, an excellent first year for Coach Wojcik. He's, he's got a lot of energy, and him, him and his staff will go out. They, they, they had a good base when they came here. They'll add to that base. They'll go out recruiting yes. and build their own program. Well, from Point Park College to the College of Charleston, I'm wondering, how bad do you miss coaching? Well, you know, I'm 66, yes. and uh, there are times I do miss it. Again, I wish I could have finished a job here. 
Um, I, I wanted to get us in the NCAA tournament, and we came close. And two years ago, we had the best team, and that's when Jeremy Simmons got injured. Um, and that was a big, big injury for us uh, when he missed the last uh, 13 games of the year. But we had the best team. That was, that was the NCAA team. That was the team that we uh, worked hard. We could have won it without him, but we wouldn't have won far in the NCAA without Jeremy. So, um, I, you know, I'm very proud of what um, was accomplished here by my staff and I and the players. Um, and again, you know, I just wish we could have taken it one more step. Uh, and hopefully Coach Wojcik can do that. Well, let's slow the interview down just a minute. It's something I call when I say. When I say 125. 68 career totals here at the College of Charleston. You say? Well, I never knew how many wins I had here. You know, I remember I remember I got my 500 wins here. Yes. Um, I'm not into numbers. I don't like numbers. Me <laughs> neither. Uh, and, um, but, you know, just the overall thing. When I first came here, uh, this arena was not here. And um, so, you know, it, it just the whole experience was fantastic. Really yes. fantastic experience. When I say ACC tournament championships, you say? ACC uh, tournament championships, I always remember the first one, Atlanta. But, you know, I think of Georgia Tech, Mark Price, John Sally. Oh, yes. And, um, you know, so many great times there. And, and I'm back involved with Georgia Tech, doing a little consulting there. Yeah. And I'm going to stay involved with college basketball. The most important thing is I wanted to get healthy, and I, I accomplished that. And so now I feel, I feel I can do whatever I need to do. Whatever I want to do, I feel I can do it. When I say NIT appearances, you say? Oh, NIT, I do think about the NIT here at the College of Charleston. Uh, again, we were a little disappointed because that was our NCAA year. Oh, yes. And then we lost Jeremy. But the NIT uh, winning, um, uh, let's see, uh, we, we won a couple of games, and uh, it was really exciting to almost get to New York City. When I say Coach of the Year, you say? Uh, I don't keep up with that stuff. Um, when I, I think it's, I think of success and happiness. Yes, yes. When I say 31 seasons as a head basketball yeah. coach, what do you say? I think it's great. It, you know, basketball has been my life as a player and as a coach. You know, my parents were Irish immigrants. That's I right. grew up in the Bronx, New York. That's right. And their dream was to have their children, um, you know, live the American dream. And um, the game of basketball and my parents – uh, allowed me to live the American dream, and I continue to live the American dream. Well, piddle your memory you have for me, and take me back to July 3rd, 2006. You were named the head basketball coach here at the College of Charleston. And obviously, Dave just came back from a really terrible PR nightmare with Tom Herring leaving. I'm wondering, how did you use your magic to bring the college back to its prominence? Yeah. Well, the timing was right. You know, I was the right guy at the right time. Yes. Yes. Of course, uh, we all know Greg Marshall oh, yes. accepted a job. He pulled a Bobby Cremins and he <laughs> left. Um, and so, um, but the timing, you know, so much in life is the right timing. I was, it was a perfect fit. Sure. And um, once I got here, um, I, I, I'd been out of coaching for six years. That's right. And I fell back in love with the game, fell in love with the city of Charleston, the people in Charleston, and the college. And uh, then when this arena was built, um, it, was, it was really, really fun. A lot of fun moments here, a lot of great memories. And let's talk about your great friend, John Kress. Yeah. It seems like you guys have a really great relationship. Yeah, John and I go way back. Um, our mentors were very good friends. My mentor was Frank McGuire right. from New York, and That's his right. mentor was Luke Conasecca uh, from St. John's, New right. York. And they were very good friends. So John and I go way back. John was on the selection committee uh, when I became head coach here. Uh, he met with every one of our recruits. He, he, he can sell the, the College of Charleston better than anybody I know. And he put this school on the map. And yes. he put this program on the map. And so John will always be the godfather uh, of this program, the father, whatever you want to call him. And he's a tremendous person and a great, great coach. And even before the College of Charleston, it was your beloved Georgia Tech. Yeah. And you were an icon there for like 19 seasons. Yeah, Georgia Tech it was my baby. Yes. Yes. Uh, I played in the ACC, and I wanted to coach in the ACC. Yeah. When I played at South Carolina, they were in the ACC. And I had a dream one day of, of coaching in the league where I played oh, yes. and winning an ACC championship. And uh, Georgia Tech, great city of Atlanta, great yes. academic school. Yes, indeed. And, um, and so we, you know, we rolled up our sleeves there, and we got the job done there. And that, that was a lot of fun. And now, you know, I, I, 
you know, the three schools I coached at, Appalachian State, right. Georgia Tech, sure. College of Charleston. I, I love seeing them, watch them progress. Um, I'll go to games and I'll sit back and I'll watch. Yes. And let's talk about the 70s and 80s at App State. Um, before you even came there, I've read that the school was only winning 22 games uh, in the, the Division One. well, before it became, you know, the, yeah. the Division One school. No, they were struggling. Yes. Um, they, they had not done very well. Uh, but that was a unique place, yes. in the mountains of North Carolina. And um, I, I, at first I was a little bit out of my comfort zone, um, but I, I fell in love with the mountains, yeah. the climate, um, and the, um, the beauty of the mountains. And, and Appalachian, and my, I had my, my son was born there, and Boone, North Carolina became a very special place uh, for me. Um, so I've been very fortunate, um, you know, I could walk away knowing that the three schools that I coached at, that we had success. Yes. And that I could go back with my head up all high and have, have some great, great memories. And let's talk about your alma mater, USC. Yeah. Where you're working as assistant under Frank McGuire. Right. What was that like? I mean, I, I'm thinking it, it had to be mesmerizing. Yeah, Frank McGuire, Coach McGuire was like the godfather. I loved playing for him. And he had been at North Carolina and won a national championship in 1957. And then he went to the NBA, Coach Wilt Chamberlain. Yes. But he had a son with Down syndrome, and the NBA was not suited for him. So when the South Carolina job opened up, he went back to college. And he went right back to New York, where he got all those kids to go to Chapel Hill. This time, he got us all to go to Columbia, South Carolina, and built a great program there. Okay. And, and um, I really I loved, I loved playing for the Gamecocks. And even before that, you were playing as a professional basketball player in Ecuador. Yeah, I was try, tried to make the NBA. I tried out for the 1972 Olympic team as yes. an AAU player. Right. My number one goal was to play. I wanted to play in the NBA. That was my number one goal. And when I came up short, uh, I could have went overseas and played, but to me it was the NBA or nothing. Yeah. And um, when that door closed, um, the coaching door opened up. So um, I'm, I'm really grateful that... Um, that I didn't continue pursuing playing because um, I could have went over and played overseas, uh, but coaching, coaching turned out to be my destiny. And when did you know you wanted to be a coach? Um, you know, the, after the first year. Um, again, I almost, I almost can try to continue to play, um, but I, I didn't want to just, um, you know, go all over Europe, all over the world. Sure. I, 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 I wanted to get a little bit settled. And, um, and the coaching door opened up and, and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Point Park College. This, uh, this coach, Jerry Conboy, called me and, and I drove to Pittsburgh and I coached the freshman team. It was assistant to the varsity and yes. then Frank McGuire uh, brought me back to South Carolina as an assistant. And then um, I get this uh, phone call from the tennis coach of South Carolina uh, who had attended Appalachian State and he wanted me to interview. Yeah. So he got me an interview. And, it just kept on going one after the other. I was very young. I was 27 when I became head coach at Appalachian. And um, I was the youngest coach in the country. Um, but that's where it all started. Finish these sentences for me. Being an academic student at USC Wallace. Um, <laughs> I, was, I was not in tune academically. Uh, I didn't take my academics serious. Really? Uh, I, I, all I did was play basketball. I loved basketball. I went to school because I had to. Sure. But sure. Later, on, later on, I started to take academics more serious. And once I got into coaching, the one thing I tried to do was make sure all my players um, did not have the attitude that I had. Oh, Hallows High School. Yeah. What was that like? It's great. It was a Catholic high school. I won a scholarship there. Um, and the Catholic High School League in New York was very competitive. Sure. Uh, I, we played against uh, Power Memorial, and they had a guy by the name of Lou Alcinda, Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Yes. And the Catholic school, they gave scholarships. So um, winning a scholarship um, was really great. And let's talk about growing up in the South Bronx. Yeah. Because I read that you didn't do well in school. You got Fs. You ran with the gangs and whatnot. Right. Um, tell me about that experience. And what did you learn from that? It was great. Yeah. You know, a lot of immigrants. And sure. um, we were like a melting pot. There, there was no racism. Right. Um, uh, the, most of the, the African Americans, the blacks, they played. Um, uh, basketball, um, the Spanish, they love the softball, um, the, the Italians, uh, they love football, yes. and the, the Jewish people, the, 
everybody had different things, but we all mixed together. Sure. And I just, um, I grew up right across the street from a schoolyard, New York schoolyard, and I gravitated towards that schoolyard. And, um, you know, there were mostly African Americans there, and that's how I learned to play the game, by playing um, against them. They loved the game more than anybody else. And uh, basketball was, uh, it was uh, a ray of hope for all of us. But what I loved about the Bronx, that we were, regardless of our religion or our color, we were all the same. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to the story, I'm sorry. Let's talk about you being inducted into the New York City Basketball Hall yeah, of Fame. Yeah, that, that was, was remarkable. Yeah, I've been, I've been fortunate, I've been in several Hall of Fames, and uh, uh, you know, these honors, they're really nice, <clears throat> and um, they're, they're prestigious, um, but they're not the most important thing. I do them because, um, because uh, you, know, you meet such wonderful people. I just got inducted into the Brooklyn Hall of Fame, uh, Hall of Fame and I told them, I, f I said, I'm from the Bronx, and they yeah. said, it's okay. <laughs> and I had a wonderful night there and met some incredible people. And so these are wonderful honors. Sure. Uh, and um, it, you just meet some wonderful people when you go to events like that. Golfing is? Golfing is a, a serious hobby for me. It's, uh, it fills a void. Yeah. Um, when, I, when I left coaching um, at Georgia Tech in the year 2000, I, I was going to go right back. Okay. Um, and, it, you know, I, I waited too long. But golf and filled the void. I love golf. Um, when I went to Georgia Tech, um, I read about Bobby Jones, considered maybe, you know, maybe the greatest ever. He, he attended Georgia Tech. And I love the history of golf. And my parents, me from Ireland, uh, golf is so important in Ireland. I just got back from a trip in Scotland. Oh, wow. And it's like a religion over there. So um, I wish I was a better golfer, uh, but I enjoy golf. I enjoy the history of golf, and it's been a great hobby for me. I also play tennis, yes. but my, uh, my knees have been a little tough on me. Oh, no. So golf's a little bit easier. And isn't it true that you and George Benson are golf buddies? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, Dr. Benson's a very good golfer. Yes, yes, indeed. He's a lot better golfer than I am, but he has a love for the game of golf also. And didn't you have a hand in bringing him to the college? Not really. Um, he said that he considered it because I was here. And he asked me to uh, give his introductory speech, which was really nice. Um, but, you know, Dr. Benson um, has done a great job. We kid each other a lot. He came from Georgia, and of course I came from Georgia Tech. <laughs> so, um, but he's been very good to me. You know, one word to describe Bobby Crimmins. Um, uh, uh, crazy. <laughs> No, no question about it. I'm a little different, um, but I've been very, very fortunate, very fortunate. And again, you know, I lived through my parents' dreams. Sure. I lived through their journey from Ireland to the South Bronx. Yes. And um, I hope my son does that and hope his children will also do that. Let's talk about family and your wife, Carolyn. Yeah, um, I was um, in Columbia and she got divorced and moved into an apartment complex where I lived in. So she had two girls. And I'm Irish Catholic. Yes. <laughs> my parents flipped out, but we got married, and then we had one boy. Yes. And and now he's married, and his wife's expecting a a boy. Congratulations. So, thank you. So we wanted to we want we want the journey to continue in any way we can. And do you want your four kids to be involved in basketball somehow? Yeah. You know, you know, my son played high school basketball, but you know, no, that's not the end to the means for them um, or for me. Um, I would love for my, my future grandson to play basketball. Awesome. I really would. Um, you know, I think basketball's uh, in our genes, and we'll see what happens. But um, the most important thing is just that he'd be a good person. You have been a head coach. You have been an assistant coach. You have mentored many, you know, basketball players who are now NBA stars. But let's talk about your future. As you mentioned, you are 66 years old. What's the next chapter for you? That's that's the question. Um, you know, you, you know, yeah. I've heard the phrase before. You do what you can until de destiny identifies itself. Right. And uh, I'm living right now. I'm back living. I'm back healthy. I'm involved with a lot of things. I, I'm, I do a lot of charity golf outings. That's true. I'm involved with coaches versus cancer. I'm involved with the Jimmy V. This will be the 20th year for the Jimmy V. I did consultant for the College of Charleston, Georgia Tech. I do motivational speaking. I do clinics. Um, so I'm living. I'm doing a lot of things. 
and I'm hoping by doing all these things, it would lead me to something more definite. Um, you know, people want to know if I'll coach again. Oh, yes. And, um, you know, at my age, probably not. But if something special happens and, I'm, and I feel the way I do now, I might consider it. Um, but I'm living. I'm healthy. I'm living. Life is good. I'm really excited about my grandson coming. Oh, yes. So we'll see. We'll, you know, I don't know exactly what the future holds, but what I know I'll continue to live like this, and, and if nothing happens, it'll be a wonderful life. Well, Bobby Crimmins, it was so great talking to you. Uh, thank you, Quentin. Thank uh, nice you. meeting you. Likewise. And I appreciate um, you having me. Anytime. Okay. Thank